Welcome to the Words to Empower podcast, featuring Bishop Frank Stewart, pastor of the Acts Ministry in Conway and North Little Rock, and now, Pastor Stewart. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we are so thankful that you are tuning in as we are trying to explain and tackle this very important subject as we deal with Passover. Easter is coming up. And that is Passover. It's something that the Lord did in the book of Exodus. It's some things that he did. We just see Jesus shedding his blood, but it's impossible to understand the cross if we do not understand Passover, when it actually happened, what was going on, what was transpiring. And I believe that in Christianity, this is one of the huge problems that keep us from receiving what God wants us to have. So we've been walking through some scriptures. We started off with the promises of God. Jesus said, I come so you can have life, have it more abundantly. St. John 10 and 10, I come. So what? He says he came to earth so I could have life and I could have it more abundantly. So what did he do in the 21st century since he came to earth about 2,000 years ago? How is it that he can make a trip to earth 2,000 years ago and it benefits me now? Now, it's one thing to just believe. It's one thing to believe, and that's all right. But I'm saying when we don't have an understanding, we don't have an understanding, we're lost. When we don't know why things work the way they work, then we're lost. Because an understanding of why things work the way they work, it increases our faith. It increases our faith to give us understanding and how to appropriate what Jesus did 2,000 years ago on a hill called Calvary, on an old wooden cross, what that's got to do with my life today. How does that impact my life today beside me just dressing up in a brand new outfit on Easter Sunday, beside me just coming on Easter Sunday and not the rest of the year? How does what Jesus did 2,000 years ago, how does that affect me? I don't have a time machine where I can travel back to that. I can't travel back in the past 2,000 years and stand at the foot of the cross. How does it impact me today? Now, these are some questions that we may never ask, but we need to understand in order to receive what he's given unto us. What I said to you and Peter, what Peter said concerning what Jesus did, and it says that by whose stripes, verse 24, 1 Peter 2, and 24 says, by his stripes, we were healed, past tense. It's in the past. He's already done it. He's already healed, delivered, and set free. So even though many believe just that, how to exercise it, how to apply it, is something that we are missing and we're not seeing the results of the extraordinary life that he meant for us to live. So if he came to earth, so I could have life and have it more abundantly. And if I'm not seeing that, then his coming to earth is not impacting my life. It is doing nothing for me because I'm not seeing, I'm not experiencing why he made that long trip from heaven to earth and be inserted in the womb of a virgin and to die on the old rugged cross and be buried. That means nothing. If I do not have an understanding, it doesn't mean anything to me when it comes to my life, the impact that it has on my life. Let's go to Psalms 103, uh, first four verses. The psalmist says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Have you ever blessed him with everything that is within you? To bless the Lord with everything that is within you. Now, immediately, when we think about that, we think about physical actions. We think about running, screaming, and and I'm not saying that's not part of it. I'm not saying rejoicing is not part of it. But to understand what it means to bless him with all that is within me is a key component. See, one thing we, we, we learn is that We can't read over scriptures because if we do that, we miss principles because it's all interconnected. So if I miss something, then what I miss will keep keep me 
from receiving the results that I want to receive because I've missed something that was very important. I missed the principle. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, what God has done. The Bible says he loadeth us down every day with benefits. And we have to believe that. We have to believe that every day we wake up, God has given us extraordinary grace. He's given us incredible benefits. I believe that most, most children of God, they die without using their benefits that he has given unto us. Never experience those benefits that he wants us to have. It says in verse 3, who forgiveth all our iniquities, who healeth all our diseases. Now that's very important. That's what I'm trying to get to. The same God who forgives all our iniquities, it says he heals all our diseases. That's physical, that's mental, that's emotional, that's spiritual, that's financial. He is a healer. He's not restricted to one area. Think about it. When God was revealed as Jehovah Rapha at Mara, when the children of Israel went 72 hours without water, they came to a place called Mara. They couldn't drink the water because it was bitter. It was in that bitterness that God revealed himself as Jehovah Rapha, the God that healed thee. Now think about it. Nobody was sick. This is not a time where they were sick physically. He's talking about healing whatever is bitter in our lives. Whatever it is, whether it's emotional and brothers and sisters, most of our healing, the great need for healing in the world is emotional healing. And I don't know if you've heard or not, but uh, the greatest one, the, the second greatest disease in the world in a few years will be depression. It will be the most debilitating disease in the world, second most debilitating disease in the world. And it eventually will become number one because the Bible teaches us the amount of fear that is going to be upon the earth as we move through the last days. So emotional healing, emotional bitterness, and we know we lost emotional bitterness from, from unforgiveness, from things that have happened in our lives. Jesus said, I healed that. I healed that. They needed water. The water was bitter. He turned it into sweet water. How? He told Moses to throw a tree in the water. A tree. Think about it. There are some, there are some principles. There is, there is some information we need to know on how God works. So we can walk by faith and not by sight. So our faith can be where it needs to be. If you don't know that. It'd be like putting water in your gas tank and expecting it to start. You'll say gas is liquid and water is liquid. What's the big deal? You have to understand there is a difference. So it is with understanding the word of God. It'll make the difference between, it'll make the difference between accelerating and standing still in life when it comes to the promises of God. So he says, he says that he forgiveth all our iniquities he heals all our diseases now now this is what i'm trying to get us to understand all of us all of us is that if we believe he forgives all our iniquities then we got to believe that he heals all our diseases whether physically emotionally mentally we have to believe that he does that he does that you cannot believe half a sentence Make one half of the sentence truth and the other half of the sentence untruth for a period of time. This is, this is God revealing to us what he does. And he does this body, soul, and spirit. Because verse 4 says, who redeemeth your life from destruction, who crowneth thee with love and kindness, and to the mercy, and we've seen him redeem our lives, our physical lives. We've seen him redeem our spiritual lives. The problem is in the emotion. So here again, here's another promise. Here's another promise that he's able to deliver us. He's able to heal us. He's able to remove us from a narrow place and put us in a large place, which we can talk about is, is, is in essence, salvation. Right? So, what do I need to know? 
to make what what he did on the cross applicable to my life. To my life. Now watch what it says here. And let me let me say this in Matthew chapter 8 and verse number 17. Listen to this. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. See now what is happening, Matthew is interpreting what the prophet Isaiah said. So it's impossible, it's impossible to separate. Old and New Testament and get an understanding without the Old Testament. We don't have the we don't have the dunamis. We don't have the impact. We don't receive what we need to receive because we don't have understanding. We don't have understanding. So here he, he says he says that. During this time, this is Matthew chapter eight. People came to Jesus. He cast out demons, healed them. He healed all who were sick, and that you'll find it over and over in the gospel. He healed all of them. 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 And it says that it might be fulfilled that was written by Isaiah. So here's the Bible interpreting the Bible. So if I miss the part that interprets the other part, then I have no understanding. So Matthew, what he is saying makes no sense. Unless I understand what Isaiah said. If I understand what Isaiah said, it makes me more equipped to apply the healing power, the delivering power of God to my life. So that's why Isaiah goes back and he says, this is what he was talking about. This is why you need this. This is why you need to understand this. All right. Let me let me bring it home a little bit. So you, you, you get you get you get to uh, college and you say I'm a writer and you start writing and writing a book but you didn't get what you needed in elementary school uh, nouns and verbs and adverbs and adjectives you didn't understand that but when you do understand it then we take it for granted oh since I understood it I can do this what I'm doing now because of what I received much earlier God bless you until tomorrow. For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. The Axe Church in North Little Rock is located at 1224 Franklin Street. For more information, go to axeministriesonline.org or give us a call at 501-329-2055. Thank you for tuning in to the Axe Ministry Podcast. The Axe Church is located at 1423 Indian Street in Conway and 1224 Franklin Street in North Little Rock, Arkansas. Tune in each day to hear an inspiring word from Pastor Frank Stewart. We want to welcome everyone back to Axe Ministries. We will be re-entering our sanctuary at both locations, both in Conway and in North Little Rock. In Conway, our service will begin at 12 noon. We want you to know that the doors will open 30 minutes before each service, but we're asking you to be there prior to then so that you can go through the drive through with the health professionals so that they can take everyone's temperature in the car to clear you to come into the building for service. We want you to know that Acts Ministries, above all, first and foremost, we want your safety and health to be our utmost and top priority. So we're taking precautionary measures to make sure that we do everything within our power to make sure you are safe. So we want you to know that coming back to Acts Ministries, coming back to the house of God will be a safe and not only safe, but a friendly environment for everyone. So when you come back to the house of God, please don't forget your mask. You can smile behind the mask and wave and say hello. We have a a no 4HKT in process. What is a 4HKT? What is a no 4HKT? That means no hugs, no high fives, no hand holding and no handshakes, no kisses and no touching. So we want to social distance ourselves six feet apart from as many people as possible. We have put decals on the phone, on the floor to help you to social distance from other people. We have signage up to help you to remind you about your mask and to remind you about social distancing. We have proper 
protocol for hand washing placed in the restrooms along with some other measures that we've taken. And so if you have questions, comments, or concerns, you can always send those to wtebroadcast at gmail.com. And we are keeping many on the prayer list. Those of you who have pre-existing conditions, those of you who, who may not meet the criteria and you've taken the Acts Reentry Attendant Self uh, Assessment form, you've taken that and you realize that you can't come back but you've already signed up to come back, please call the office and let them know that you have signed up, but you won't be able to come so that they can feel your seat since you will no longer be able to come. So we want you to know, um, even though if you're not able to come back in our phase one, you will probably be able to come back in phase two. So don't lose heart. We are live streaming. You will be able to see everything on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Axe TV. Just know that we will still be streaming. We'll still be reaching out to the masses, to the multitudes. And until that time, we look forward to seeing you back in the house of God. Welcome back, Axe.